Hello, everybody. My name is Katie from Greenland Quilt, and I'd like to welcome you to my live on Saturday. This is the night where we're all sewing together, and I've been working on the project for the last three weeks with you guys. So now we're going into week. Ooh, and I have. I have a echo, so I need to take care of it. Okay, do you guys hear an echo? Maybe not, I hope not. Okay, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, we're going to continue on with what I've been working on uh, for the last three weeks. I have some additional things we're going to do with that. And also, um, I have some things I wanted to talk to you about as well. And I'll talk to you about them before we start sewing. Um, hello, Robin. Hello, Joy. Hello, Linda, Melanie, and Andrea. Andrea, can you see the um, closed captioning? Let me know. Hi, Melanie. Um, Nikolai is gone. Um, I don't think they've set sail from Nuke yet. They were supposed to this morning, and there's been things going on, so they haven't set sail. And he hasn't called me, so I'm assuming that um, they haven't left yet. So there's that. Hello, Denise. Hello. Uh, I missed somebody up here. Hi, Glenda. That's who I missed. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to give you a couple, couple more minutes, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit and then tell you what we're going to do tonight with the next part of the little quilt we've been working on or I've been working on and whoever's been, I know Andrea's making one. Um, I'm not sure who else is doing it, but anyway, uh, work on whatever you want to work on and watch me play with more of this uh, little quilt. Hi, Robin Marie. I think I already said hi, didn't I? Yes, I did. Hello, Sylvia. It's weird he's gone and I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I never I don't think we ever get used to just saying goodbye every time we have to part ways so he can go to sea. So he will be at sea until March the third. And then he's going to meet me in Florida on March the fourth. I think that's what we got set for the flight. As long as there's no uh weather problems so um he'll be flying into jacksonville uh at the beginning of march so and then we have lots of plans um so here's here's what's going on in my life right now um we're going to talk a little bit about quote con what my my um schedule is kind of going to look like because um, I am going to be in the United States from February the 19th until April 2nd, but I won't be home until April 4th or 3rd, 4th. Yeah, April the 4th. So here's how, here's, so I'm going to give you guys an idea of what it's like traveling from Greenland to the United States. Hello, Melanie Taylor. So here, here's what it's like. My husband was fleet side ship for 10 years. Then Melanie, you're a wife of a sailor. So you understand this dreading the goodbye thing and, you know, all that. It never gets easier. I mean, it's easier than it was in the beginning because um, in the beginning when I first moved here, you know, he would be at sea five or six months and then he would come home and try to be home a month and they wanted him back on the job within like a week it was crazy and um he finally uh accepted a promotion four years ago and now it's got him working two on and and then he's off two off so that means two months on two months off like clockwork and uh he gets a salary when he's not working and you know it's 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 
it gets it gets him home with me six months of the year, but stretched out instead of this him gone six months, be home two weeks, be gone five months, be home two weeks. You know, it was it was hard. And the longer we've been married, the harder it's gotten about saying goodbye. So yeah, I don't think um you know it'll ever be easier. Hi Kelly. Did you want to join me on the live or no? I sent you an email. She's making, oh, she's with a client to pick up his travel pouch. Oh, you're busy right now. Okay, no problem. All right. So anyway, back to uh, what I was going to talk about. Well, at least no knowing when return. Well, yeah, before I didn't know when he was going to come home. When my kids were small, my husband traveled a lot. Emergency service, so no warnings or no when return. Yeah, there's that. That happened a lot here. You know, he would be gone and then he would plan to be home a month and he'd get a phone call, please come back to work. You know, that happened a lot. And it's because um, he knows how to do everything except the engineering department. He is what you call multitasker. He can run the crane. He can uh, drive the boat or the ship. Um, he runs the deck because that's that's what he runs. That's his main job. He runs the deck. And um, but he can also run the factory and work in the factory. So he can he's very he knows how to do all of it except run fix engines on those ship. I sent it about an hour ago. Take or a half hour ago. Have a look. I didn't see your email till like an hour ago, and then I finally got got where I could answer it. So I'm sorry for answering so late. But if you're interested, let me know, and I'll send you a link. Okay, so here's what's going to happen next month. So on February the 15th, I'm going to fly to Denmark. Now, I'm going to be in Denmark four days. Yeah. And you're probably wondering, well, why would you say four days in Denmark before flying to the United States? Well, it, it's kind of like this. The weather is the boss here, not humans. <laughs> so we, I have learned to set up a four-day contingency just in case I get stuck somewhere and can't fly. And that prevents me from hopefully losing my ticket to the United States. Because it has happened, I had a contingency in place, and I still lost my ticket because I was stuck six days somewhere instead of four. So um, within a couple, if I am stuck somewhere, I should know within two days if I'm going to end up having to call Delta Air and figure out what to do about my flight. So because um, I usually fly with Norwegian Air, but Norwegian Air um, uh, ran into a problem, you know, when the when the when the big shutdown happened, um, they had they have twenty three Dreamliners, and they were doing all these long haul flights with their new Dreamliners. And so when they got grounded, like everybody else did, um, it it just about bankrupted them. So the the uh, Norwegian government or Norway. Um, said, let's do this. We're just going to ground all long haul flights and you just fly uh, domestic in Europe so you can get back on your feet good. So I don't know if they've sold all their Dreamliners or what they're doing, but there's still no long haul flights from Norwegian Air and they were the best to fly with. I mean, oh my gosh, it was like flying in a Cadillac at a cheap price. I mean, it was wonderful. And the, and the staff on the uh, jet was exceptionally kind so anyway, back to what I was talking about. So now I have to fly with Delta Air. Um, so I will leave here through Air Greenland on the 15th, fly to Copenhagen, spend four days there, and then I'll get on Delta Air flight and I'll go from Copenhagen. Well, actually, let me start all over again. Let me tell you how this is going so you can get an idea what traveling is like. Okay. From this town, I get on a helicopter and I go to a small airport called Narsarsawak. And then I go from Narsarsawak to Kangarlusawak. That is the current international airport here in Greenland. Now that will change come December when Nuke becomes the new international airport. 
And then I fly from Kangaroo Siwak to Copenhagen, stay four days. And then on the 19th, I will get on Delta Air and I'll go from Copenhagen to Amsterdam, switch planes, and then, and which will be a long haul flight. And then I go from Amsterdam to JFK, which is in New York, and then from JFK to Raleigh, North Carolina. That's how my flight's going to be. So I will be landing in Raleigh, North Carolina on February 19th. Now that's that's three days before QuiltCon starts. And I planned it that way because I'm going to have jet lag and I really don't want to be tired for QuiltCon. I really don't. So probably that first day, I'm probably just going to sleep the whole time in a hotel more than likely because I have to readjust myself to um, Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, that's a little bit hard. So there's all of that. Um, and I'll spend two, I'll be spending two nights at a, a hotel by the airport. And then I'll be going to an Airbnb on the 21st. So there's three days there where I can um, get good rest, go get a lay of the land, uh, meet up with Christine, who is going to be one of, one of the fellow quilters that we're sharing an Airbnb with. And my daughter will be driving up on the 22nd. So I'm not sure exactly what time she'll be arriving. But her and my grandbaby and her husband will be meeting us at the Airbnb. And she'll attend some of QuiltCon. And they're also going to do things with the baby because it's too hard. Okay. Hi, Siberian. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with the notification. So let me backtrack here. Okay. When my... Kelly says, hi, gang, I'm putting this on to play. Okay, read that part. All right. Yeah. Melanie says it does get easier. Kelly says, I didn't see the email. Melanie says, my stepdad was a shrimper during the summer months. Was he gone a lot during the summer months, Melanie? Sylvia says, me and my kids would run to the dock when Coast Guard ship was in. My kids like sea and even got to a tour, got a tour too that's cool sylvia siberian says katie i just found the live apparently missed the notification yeah i'm sorry about that uh kelly says i just replied to your email still watching out for my client and i'll go look at the email in a minute i would have to have a vacation from all that travel left out well yeah it, it's very tiring Teresa, welcome welcome uh sylvia says that sounds like fun Andrea says hi to Teresa and everybody said hello. Okay, so let me go have a real quick look at that email. And then I'm going to tell you what the next, what we're going to discuss before we start sewing. Uh, so let me have a real quick peek at an email so I can see what, whether, right, hold on a minute, please. Okay, Kelly, I'll get back to you on that. Is that okay? All right. Hello, Candice. And hello, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so now that I've talked about that, so if, when, I, when I'm in the United States, I will, I will do all four days of QuiltCon, and then I'm going to ride back down to Florida with my daughter and her family, and then Nikolai will fly in on... It's either March the 3rd or March the 4th. I have to look at his ticket. And I'll drive to Jacksonville to pick him up. And then my plan is to spend two days in, at Jack Speaks with another fellow quilter that I want to meet. Her name is Krista. And she's she's one of the uh, women that is part of the puzzle mystery that I've gotten to know over the last few years that uh, we've become friends. So I'm going to see her. And then we'll go back to Lake City and spend a little time there. Um, then the plan is, is we're going to go to Kissimmee so that Nikolai can attend a Lego convention, which I think is so cool. He really should do that. And I think it'll be fun going with him for that. And then we're going to make a trip to Georgia to see another quilter just outside of Atlanta, uh, in Powder Springs. And I'm hoping those that live around that area will want to meet up somewhere and we have dinner together or something. Because um, I know there's a few that live close to Powder Springs and Carrollton. And I'm also going to be checking on my son and seeing what I need to 
kind of ex assess what's going on with him since he's moved there. Blaze did start school this past week. That's my grandson. Um, he start he, he got his first day. He went for his first day of school on Tuesday, I believe. And um, y'all, it's the coolest thing because Thomas told me that his classroom's decorated in Super Mario World. So how cool is that? And the teacher's really nice, and Blaze seems to like it. So, so far, so good. So now it's just a matter of finding housing for them and him getting a job. That's the two big obstacles right now that needs to happen quickly because he's running out of money. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do when that happens because I'm pretty sure it's going to happen soon. So y'all keep him. I usually don't like bringing religion into this, but if you're, you know, if you like, if you pray for him, that he gets a job quickly and finds housing quickly, that would be great. He's doing everything. We're doing everything we can to get him, you know, on his feet there. Um, but it does take time and housing seems to be a big problem everywhere in the United States right now. So, uh, yeah, keep him in your thoughts. Just send good thoughts his way. He could use them. Okay. Now, let me see who else is coming here. Melissa. Hi. Uh, okay. Ah, oh, hi, Mary Liston. Hello in the chat. How is everyone today? I'm good. How about yourself? Okay, so at, basically, so you're you're kind of getting. I gave you the short of my plans while I'm in the United States. So that means I'm going to be gone from February the fifteenth until April the fourth, and I'll be home on April the fourth. Now, April 5th and 6th, you might not even see me because we'll be jet lag or we'll both be jet lagged because we'll lose an entire day when we go from Eastern Standard Time to Copenhagen time. And then from Copenhagen time to Greenland time, there's a lot of loss, a lot of loss of time zone hours there that happens. Um, but I have things set up that's going to happen in April, a couple days after I'm home. So no worries on that. I will be uh, working on getting content while I'm in the U.S. I intend on documenting as much of the actual quilt show, not the vendors. I might do some vendor stuff, but I'm more interested in documenting quilts and the show and try to capture the the um, stories that are next to each of the quilts. And, you know, since I'm there for four days, there's no reason why I can't at least get, I don't know. I understand there's probably going to be about 500 quilts in that in that show. And um, I'm going to shoot for 500, but that doesn't mean I'll make it to all 500. But I will try my best to document as much as I can. And then I'll spread the videos out over time because I'm going to break them up in pieces. I don't see the point in me trying to go live because I have watched other lives at other quilt shows and the... Um, the uh, connection inside of a convention center doesn't seem all that great and you get a lot of pixelation so you miss out a lot of what's being shown quilt wise and i would rather make good videos that you can actually sit and watch at your leisure and you know and have good video to watch so um i'm not sure how i'll set up the whole format of how i'll break them apart or how long to make them, because I, I think that a lot of people's attention span doesn't last past 20 minutes when it comes to watching, you know, YouTube videos, so maybe I'll keep it at 20 minutes, or maybe I'll keep it at a half hour and hope everybody will watch the whole 30 minutes, but I definitely will break them up. Okay, Joyce says, it's funny, whenever I watch Katie's channel, I get hungry, left out loud, be comfortable being here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, I want this channel to be laid back. I don't want it, no pressure on anyone, not even me. You know, I'm starting to um, get more comfortable myself. Um, today, I didn't experience my usual, let's have a nervous thing going on. But maybe because I've had a little rest today, I'm not, I am not sleeping well. I'm, um, since the thing with my sewing room happened and everything, you probably already heard me mention this before. It triggered something, and so I've been having bad dreams at night, and which when I wake up, I can't go back to sleep, and I don't know how to deal with the bad dreams because you can't tell your brain not to have a bad dream. So um, I know that over it'll probably pass. This is just a 
bump in the road when it comes to mental health. So there's that. Okay. And no, I'm not crazy. It's just life has done damages. All right. Now then, um, the other thing I was going to talk to you about is um, I am going to try to leave enough content with plenty of lives for you guys. And during the week when we're, I'm not doing a live, I'm going to do some pre-recorded things. Um, what would be, I would like uh, input here. What would be the longest video? How do I put this question? What is too long of a pre-recorded video for you? Let me know in the chat. Is it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? How short is good for you guys or do you like long videos? Let me know now. Uh, Mary Lestone, my sewing room got destroyed by a neighbor's trampoline during a really bad storm. And it sounded like a bomb went off and it triggered my PTSD stuff. All right, input please. I need input. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. What is the longest you're willing to sit to watch a pre-recorded uh, video? Linda says, I like anything short or long. Okay. Because I have some unboxings to do. And I was thinking, well, do I put them all in one video or do I split them up in little small vi videos? Catherine's, hi, Catherine. Uh, 10 to 30 minutes. Okay. I like long ones, but I will watch whatever you put on. Okay. I just, I just didn't want to make it too long and y'all get bored and walk away from it. Um, I put on long videos while I sew, so I do better with long. Okay. That could be great for working on a PM, a pre-recorded PMQ or, uh, what, a UFO that I've got planned, um, which is one of my PMQs. 30 to 45 minutes, but watch as long as it's running. Okay. By the way, I want to thank every one of you who has been watching, doing watch hours on my channel. It is really helping that you're taking the time to run my videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, Joyce says, one to two hours is good for me, but up to 12 hours. <laughs> I, had, I don't know about you, but that 12 hour was a lot of fun. Uh Mary Lestone says, depends on how much time I have, sometimes just about 20 minutes. But if I'm listening while someone is, is, it's a go to one hour. Okay. 60 minutes. Okay. Most of the videos I watch are 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So you're giving me a, a, a bit of a leeway here. That's great. Okay. So um, I have uh, some unboxings from Fat Quarter Shop and Missouri Star. Uh, and I have a cotton cuts that I bought fabric so not just my um i do have a classic but classic cut box to do so i'm going to do it as a pre-record so i have content that i can spread out uh to cover for when i'm flying and stuff so you guys won't think i disappeared off the planet i will keep y'all up to date on where i am as i move through the the travel corridor and I will also try to do some, um, while I'm in the helicopter, I definitely will be getting some video from the helicopter. So that'll be fun. He left uh, two days ago, Catherine, and he, they're still sitting in port. There's something wrong with the ship. So they haven't left yet. And I haven't heard from him in the last three hours. So I'm assuming they're still in port because he would have called me if they were sailing by now. But they're supposed to sail tonight. And we'll see what happens. Um, there's a lot of problems with this ship and I think they're going to take it into dry dock in May, I think he said. So there's that looming over everybody's head, which means dry dock, no fishing. Um, Alfonso says, hello from Colorado. Nice to see you. Um, anyone else? Come? Okay. All right. So I'm at, uh, one of the things I'm going to, tell you about is one of my ufos that i'm going to do this month that i'm going to get finished for the month of january is going to be my begonia i'm gonna get it all finished into one quilt top now when i mean finished that means just for the quilt top i'm not talking about quilting or anything else um if i get finished with that ufo i'll probably pick up one of my other pmqs and finish that because i have a few of them where the center's been done and the outside has it. Um, and I wanted to remind you guys about the love 
uh, wall hanging. We will be doing that once we finish the, the quilt we're working on now. So uh, today I'm going to share with you what we're what the plan is for um, the little quilt. And let me refresh your memory. Remember, we've been working on this, and we got we got some two borders on it. But now I'm going to work on the backing for it. Okay, so I'm going to show you a diagram of what the back is going to look like. And then I'll show you the the fab, the, the solid fabric and then the uh, leftovers. So I'm going to be piecing part of the back with some yardage or add to the yardage. There'll be more, uh, I'll be piecing around the yardage. Um, and it's the pieces I'm using is leftovers from the, uh, here I'll show you. Okay, so on the back, there's going to be this in the middle, okay? It's just going to be one solid piece in the middle. I am going to be piecing around that with leftover quilt pieces. And I, you know how we talk about uh, when we have leftovers, what to do with them? Well, I'm going to use a lot of these leftovers for the um, piecing around the solid. Okay, and let me show you a diagram of the, um, what I'm talking about. Let me find the picture first. Bear with me here. I got to find it first. Okay, let me see here. Hopefully you can see this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So here's, here's how the back is going to look. There's going to be the solid piece in the middle here. And then I'm going to piece around the outer edge of that. And then I have leftover border from the blue border from the front that I used. You know, the smaller three inch border that I had. That is going to go on the outer perimeter of that. So that's what the back is going to look like. So what do you guys think about that? Do you like that idea? And that way you get to use, um, you're using, um, Leftover scraps. Hello, Janice. Welcome to the channel. So what? Hi, Carrie. So what do y'all think about this little diagram for the backing? Because this and my quilt label is going to go down here. I'll be attaching it to one of the um, blocks, and I'll show you what the label is going to look like. The, the, the name of the game here is to use this fat leftovers. So here's what the little quilt label is going to look like. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for the binding. This will be for the binding. And this is using up more more yardage that I had that I hadn't used for anything that I've had for a while. So that will be the, uh, and it will go really good. Let me show you how to look next to the turquoise. Hold on a minute. Let me get a piece of the turquoise so you can see what it's going to look like with the blue next to it. As a binding. So this is what it's going to look like with that blue as the binding. Wait, you can't see that. Can you see that okay? The blue? So that blue is the binding that goes next to that turquoise. Oh, sorry. Let me stop sharing. Oops, sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay, so 
this dark blue is going to be the binding that's going to lay next to that outer turquoise border of the quilt. Okay? And this is the quilt label. So what I'm going to do tonight is I need to um, first, I need to uh, cut this. Uh, I'm going to cut this to the, get, get the selvage off of it and get it to the right measurements. And I'll have to do that off camera because I don't have a extra camera. And then on the long blocks that you saw in the drawing, those are going to be nine and a half by five. And then the short blocks are going to be, wait a minute, I think there was supposed to be four and a half or something. Hang on a second. Let me look back at that diagram again. So basically, um, the the long the long block the long cut blocks are supposed to be five by nine and a half, and then uh, you're going to have five inch squares, which will once you sew them in, turns them down to four and a half. So, and then that outer border that you saw of the blue will be three inch. The all of the three inch strips I had left over. So the first thing I need to do is I need to cut the center to make sure it's 40 and a half by 36. That's the first thing I need to do for the, the solid yardage part. And then I need to cut the long blocks down to nine and a half inches because currently they're five inch by 10 inch, but I wanted to do it while we were here. Did you make the labels yourself? No, those came from Sweetwater. I'm, I've been a, a Sweetwater label subscriber for a long time now so that's where those came and yes Catherine they are sweet water so what do y'all think about my plan for the back what little window oh your phone I'll be posting pictures over on my community tab so you can have a better look how you know what hang on a second y'all want me to post the the drawing over on my community tab now where you can bring up another browser and have a peek I like old school visuals too because I'm a visual learner. I can post it over there if you want me to. I didn't think to do that, but ah, I could do that. Let me trim it up a little bit. I had a little help with this. I have a friend that's really good at math and she helped me figure out the back. Her name is Diane and she's really good at this kind of thing. And she knows I'm a visual learner. So there's that. Okay, let's put this over here. Save that. All right, give me a minute. I'm going to put this picture over on the community tab so you guys can go have a look at it when you have a chance. Let me get it on the there for you guys because I definitely can do that. All right, and I'm just going to put in the comment section, this is the back for the quilt with no name because I haven't come up with a name yet. All righty. I'm going to place it over here on there. I'm going to... All right, let me get the image. I'm almost there, you guys. Okay, let's save it. Okay, I've posted the um, graphic over on my community tab. 
Um, and I will definitely put it over on my um, in my Greenlee Quilter later after the live so that you guys can go back to that. OK, now let's get on with this. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go ahead and um, cut the fabric, the, the big piece first, and then um, I'll do the rest of the cutting over here so I can talk to you at the same time. So we're, uh-oh, Alfonso says we're under an Arctic storm here. And yeah, you guys, that polar vortex broke down and a lot of the United States is uh, it looks like the entire United States is going to be cold for two or three days. And we're warm, so there's that, which is so weird. It warmed up to seven degrees. Do you have snow on the ground, Teresa? That's a great idea, Andrew Gay. I love to see your patterns. Andrea has patterns? You no, know, you wrote patterns, Andrea. Yeah, you'll have to tell me about that. I didn't know you were a powder designer. All right, let me go do this real quick and get this measured out. And, and well, I need to press it first. So let me get it press, pressed. So I'm going to try to get the back done tonight. And then next weekend, um, we're going to put it all together into a sandwich and baste it. And I can see, I can see what y'all are talking about about from over here because I have another laptop sitting up where um, I can see what y'all are saying. Okay, so let me get this ironed so I can go trim it. Two feet of snow. We have no snow, Teresa. It all melted. It's negative four here in Colorado. Wow. It, but in Colorado normally does get cold, doesn't it, Alfonso? Melanie says, I'd love to stay, but I got to wash a king size quilt so I can gift it. Y'all have fun. See you later, Melanie. Come back if you have time. It's six degrees in Twin City, Minnesota. Minnesota's another state that I understand gets cold. Alfonso will hit minus 20 with the minus 36 degrees wind chill, and that's warmer than last night. Donna says, I like Teresa Louise adding the, the selvage to the binding edge with all the info. Yeah, that was a really cool idea. Definitely. I thought that was very in cool. Janice, I usually make piece backings easy to put a label on. Yep. They just get quilted over when my long armor dies, does her thing. Yep. Mine gets quilted over too. So far, so good on power. Staying warm. Teresa, do you want to come live? I can give you the link if you want to come on. As long as you have power anyway. You up for that? Lisa says currently 50 degrees in Augusta, Georgia. I was wondering if it had gotten cold in Georgia or not. It's 62 degrees right here. Right now, got down to freezing last night. Where's right here, Andrea? Kelly says I can't type. <laughs> Come on, iron, get hot. Jeanette says hi from Portland, Oregon. It's 20 degrees. Hello, Jeanette. Welcome to the channel. Okay, let me send you a link. Good. More the merrier. All right. Those that just walked in, I'm currently pressing fabric that I've got to cut for the back. So that's what I'm working on. Because we're going to be doing the we're going to be doing the backing for the quilt we've been working on for the last three weeks. See, the idea is. I'm hoping we'll get this. I started it from start and we're going to finish it with the binding. So it'd be a start to finish kind of deal. Oh, 
Okay. Link sent, Teresa. All right. Now let me get back over here and press this. Maybe the iron will be hot enough now. I'm sewing 600 pieces today. Wow. What's she making? Hey, everybody, tell me what you're working on. 46 degrees now and dropping in North Carolina. I'm wondering what February is going to be like in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Robin says, today I'm lurking and eating pizza and punching hexagon. That sounds like fun. I know one thing. I'm going to get me some pizza while I'm in the U.S. Lisa says it's minus 9 degrees Celsius, which is 15. Yep. Uh, let me see what the current weather is here. Right now we are at, you're not going to believe this, I live in the Arctic, and we have temperatures that says 44 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a feeling our lake is going to end up uh, falling completely. Hi, Carrie. I'm throwing dog blankets. What's throwing me? Candace says, I'm working on a Valentine quilt for my daughter. Siberian says, that Bonnie Hunter one I mentioned on New Year's Eve, it's my last one left. Oh, cool. That's right. That I saw the picture where you posted it. That thing is beautiful. Kelly says, I finished up two crumb blocks earlier and then got the Valentine's fabric out and just looked at it. Has anybody got their, um, I didn't know whether Fat Quarter Shop has sent out their um, Valentine boxes yet or not. I signed up. I bought two of them. <laughs> they sent me an email again saying, did you mean to buy two of them? Yeah, it's global warming, Lisa. Definitely. The Arctic is suffering. It's been raining for two days here. And, you know, Greenland's not known for rain. And now we've been doing this a lot over the last three years. And it, the rain is getting where it's hot. You can actually hear it hitting the roof. Used to be when I first moved here, the rain would be like a mist and it would just mist for two or three days. But now it it literally rains hard here. So we're getting quite a bit of rain and it's adding to uh, uh, melting more of the snow and that snow water is sitting on top of the lake. And I think all that warm water is going to probably finish melting some, some parts of that lake. They had just given the go ahead to start walking on the lake. And then it got warm last week where it stayed above 44 degrees for almost an entire week. And yeah, there's that going on. Um, let me see. Frank says, hey, y'all took a minute to get on the pewter. Hi, Frank. How's it going in Florida? What's the temperature there? Janice says, I'm hand piecing a quilt, making it up as I go, but can't find my glasses. Uh-oh. It's definitely not on my face. <laughs> Okay, Melissa says, you are about to get really cold, Katie. Yeah, it should get cold soon. I hope so. Because it's weird. I just want to make sure that when it does get cold, all that water's gone. Instead of making a block out of ice for me to bust my butt on. Kelly says, we get mist rain here all the time. It does rain hard enough sometimes that it bounces back off the road. Yeah, normally it's misty here, but... The last two days it's been raining hard. You know what I miss? You know what I miss? You guys are gonna think I'm weird. I have forgotten what the sound of thunder sounds like. It's been a long time since I stood outside um getting that smell that comes from lightning as it's raining at the same time with lightning. The lightning, y'all I wonder how many of you know this. Did you know? That when it lightnings, when it lightning, when the lightning's happening during a rain, it ionizes the raindrops, creating hydrogen, not hydrogen, nitrogen. And it's and nitrogen is what you use to fertilize with. So it's mother snake, mother nature's way of fertilizing nature without using synthetic stuff like humans use. Bet you didn't know that, did you?
the oak little smell. Hmm, interesting. Karen Leonard, I use crumb blocks to make pet blankets. What are you using? I like long ones. All right, I'm fixing to go uh, trim this up and get it to the right size that it needs to be. Let me look at that graphic again. So it's supposed to be 36 by 40 and a half. No, 36 and, oh, 36 and a half unfinished. Okay. So I'm out of camera shot because I'm having to use the dining table as my cutting table. I miss my big table so much. Weird having to bend over to cut. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get myself a straight line set on both sides of this uh, fabric so that um, both the ends are straight. Okay. So, and that done, let's get it lined up so I can get the straight lines set. Excuse me, Nora. Mommy needs a pin. While you're waiting on me to come back, can y'all tell me what your uh, favorite time of the year is? Do you like spring, summer, fall, winter? Or do you like a combination of all of them? Forty one inches.
Sorry it's taking so long to do this. Okay, I've got this one print, and all I have to do now is um, probably press it again when, once I open it all the way up. Okay, so this part's been done. So now what I need to do is I need to get these uh, not uh, the 10 inch ones cut down to uh, nine and a half. And then I'll start sewing these together. And I'll also create, I'll take one of my, uh, one of the five inch ones and turn it in, piece it into my um, quilt label. So there'll be that piecing going on for that. Okay, let me catch oh, up on I things. Can, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was over there well, trimming that big piece of yardage. How's it going? It's going good. How about you? I'm um, okay. Kind of, It's kind of cold upstairs, but... Yeah, I, I got, see you're wearing more my clothes. Oh, yeah. yeah. But look what and I'm I... Sitting here, I'm sitting here heat, heating to death. Here's my uh, fancy leggings here. Wow, are you really that cold? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I take it you have no heating upstairs. Um. Well, I have a heater that I can plug in. And it's plugged in and on high, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's probably like um, 63 or 4 up here, maybe. That's not too terribly bad. Uh, it's, it's so warm. It's so warm outside. It's, it's 44 degrees. And I know that doesn't sound very warm. But when your house is, has heated flooring, it feels like a sauna in here. Oh. And I don't want to open the door because then I just throw all the heat out the door. And that's wasting fuel. So mm -hmm. it's like I got a fan over here running on me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hot. Like if I had heated floors, that probably would help. Yeah, the heated, yeah. I didn't, you know, I was skeptical about it when uh, Nikolai first told me he wanted to go from the radiator heating system to the, <clears throat> the heated flooring. And then when we, we had to move out of the house because the, part of the renovation was tearing all the floors up and um, to put in the heated flooring. And so we stayed at somebody's, a friend's house who has heated flooring all through his house. And it amazed me that, uh, and his house is like four times bigger than ours. He has like three levels of a house. And um, the house stayed not hot, but it wasn't cold either. It was like, just, just where, you know, like I like, I think a house at nighttime, like in your bedroom, I'm, I think I've turned into my mother. My mother liked sleeping in cooler room, in a cooler bedroom, and the rest of the house would be warm. So, like, the rest of the house might be 68 to 72 degrees, but the bedroom would be more like 64 degrees. Yeah. But she slept under blankets. I like it being 64 degrees in the bedroom, and I still don't sleep under a blanket because I'm hot all the time. I don't know what the deal is. I think I've literally adapted to Arctic weather. Yeah, sounds like it. Who to thunk a Florida girl would have done that? I used to say I would never leave my state and look where I am. Okay, let me backtrack here. Okay, I'm going to grab my laptop over so I can see the chat, and I'll be right back. Okay, okay. All right, Frank says, hey, all, it took a minute to get a new pewter up, Arg. Uh, Janice says, I'm hand-piecing a quilt, making it up as I go, but can't find my glasses. Yeah, I read that one. Uh, Siberian says, thank you. I'm glad to be finished with the one I did on the live. That one is beautiful. Uh, Kelly says, we get Miss Rain here all the time. Carrie says she's sewing dog blankets. Kelly says, Carrie, I used to crumb blocks to make, I use crumb blocks to make pet blankets. What are you using? Melissa says, ozone smell. Agnes says, I like long ones. And then Frank says, hey, Katie, temp here is 60 degrees, but feels like 50 with a breeze. Wow. Uh, Terry says three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half. And Frank says hi to Joy. 
Uh, Agnes from Jacksonville Beach. Hello, hello. I'll be in Jacksonville Beach the beginning of March. Uh, Kelly says, I like autumn best. Still nice weather, but not too hot like summer. Fall is my favorite time of the year. Uh, Denise says, favorite is summer, but I like them all. Fall for me, Joy says. We only have two seasons here, hot and humid and cool. I like cool better, Andrea says. Frank says, I miss changing seasons. seasons. Kelly says, I've lived in the southwest corner of British Columbia my entire life. Rain does not bother me at all, but I am plenty warm enough and the weather does not need to help. Yeah, well, I would rather have snow over rain here in the Arctic. Joy says, I just like longer days all year. Don't we all? Kelly says, hey, Teresa. Uh, Frank no says, I'm I'm all for longer days. Uh, Joy says, hi, Teresa, too. Nice to see you on the screen. Teresa, I wear those to drive my <laughs> drive the bus. Love my leg warmers. Uh, Kelly says, my folks have heated flooring in their previous house. They really liked it. Yeah, it is. You would never think that heated flooring could heat, a, you know, an entire house. But it does. Uh, Melissa says, I am prepping fabric for a virtual retreat tomorrow. And Andrea says, my husband wears tons of clothes to bed and a lots of covers. I sleep in a lightweight gown and no covers. I hate a hot bedroom. Yeah, that's the same thing with me. <laughs> I don't like it being hot where I'm sleeping. And I could cry. I sleep with the window cracked. All right, let me get these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start trimming these nine and a half inch. Uh, um, how many do I need? I'm going to go look at that picture again. Forgot to. I posted the picture of the little um of the graphic, by the way, in case y'all didn't hear me say that. Let me see here. Let's reduce this a little bit. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12 of them. Okay, so I need 12 of them. All right, so I'm going to show you which ones I'm going to pick for the long ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have something in my throat. <clears throat> it never goes away. Okay, so first off, I'm going to pick 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, it looks like half one. So here's the ones I'm going to be using for the the uh, nine and a half inch ones. Let me get them up here where you can see them, and then I'm gonna after I've showed them to you. Uh oh. I will um start trimming them. Okay, here's the first one. Here's number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, number six, number seven, number eight. Number nine. This one's ten. And then I'm going to um, trim two off of this one, and that'll be eleven and twelve. So I'm going to go over to the cutting board. I can still see the chat, but you won't see me on the camera. You'll only see the side of my face, probably. Sorry about that, but until I get another, I will have another camera by the time I come home though, you guys. So I'll be able to set up two cameras so you can see since I'm in such a cramped space. Because normally you would have been able to see me cutting 
because I could have just turned the camera around because of how my cutting table was uh, sitting against my sewing table. But the cutting table is like five foot long. <laughs> we couldn't move that into here. There's no space. So I am improvising. So let's do this. No problem. It's funny how you can, um, it, when you really have to, you can put yourself, you know, do what you can to improvise. Oh, this thing's weird. Oh, here we go. So right now what I'm doing is I'm cutting these 10 inch blocks down to nine and a half. I think that's what she said to do. Nine so, um, tell me what you guys been, um, let me see here. What I had posted a poll asking how many was going to go to QuiltCon or was thinking about going to QuiltCon. And I know that Frank was wanting to go. Did you figure out whether you could go or not, Frank? Melissa says she's prepping fabric for a virtual retreat. Yep, I read that already. Uh, my husband was trying to oh, said to you. Teresa, I'm going to attempt to ah come on. Yo, hey, yo, Patty G. Teresa, I'm going to attempt to sew a collage wall hanging. When are you planning this project? And then Mary H says, Teresa, did you finish the berry half triangle quilt? No. Um, the Berry Licious Triangle Quilt. It's um, it's it's pretty close, pretty close. I'm probably going to work on that for a little while today, but first I'm going to um, cut out the fabric that I need for the pressed flowers uh, quilt along that we've been doing, so I can get those out to you sometime hopefully soon because I'm haven't done block eight or nine. So I'm getting my fabric out for both of those and getting ready for that. And then I'll probably work on very licious for a little while. And um, as far as the collage quilt, we I'll start that next Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following. Sunday we'll start that one and that'll be that horse one that, that's what I'll be working on um I uh, can't remember the name of it now um let me go get it I can't remember the name oh. stop buying that um what was that called again the, the press press flower right I, I thought I'd wait till they um put the whole thing together the uh pattern kit you know just a pattern buy it all yeah. at one time because i really like the little flowers y'all been making they're so cool um i think I they uh ran out of the fabric that they were using but i think they got one um well well i don't so buy the fabric i just want the pattern well you can go online to the fat quarter shop and go to uh to the patterns, bring up pressed flowers, and um I believe you can get the PDF. Oh there. really? I didn't know that. 
Um, I knew, I knew you could buy the paper pattern, but I wasn't sure about the. Well, yeah, let me double the, check. I'll I'll bring it up in a few minutes. Okay. Um, but I know you can get the pattern. It's four ninety five a month, and um. Okay. Finally, my computer. All this time, I've been waiting for my laptop to come up. <laughs> it finally did. Okay, my volume's off on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Not a problem. Okay, so I answer that. Okay, so the, I think, um, Mary, you were talking about the berry basket. That's the fabric line. And then it's called, the quilt is called Berrylicious. And this one, is also from the Fat Quarter Shop, but I think you can only get the pattern if you buy the Jolly Bar. So that's that one. Is there a specific Jolly Bar you have to buy to get it? Yeah, it's called um, Berry Basket Collection. Uh -huh. That's the fabric you get with it. Um, and the quilt is called Berrylicious. And... The size of the quilt is 64 and a half square. Oh, nice. It's, a, um, it's the big star. That's the one, Katie. Yeah, I saw you was working on it. It's beautiful. I'm just thinking, hmm, that looks like fun. So a little I'm, hanging style. I have one, two, three, four, four of the rows sewn together on that. So I got the fifth row to sew together and then I can put piece them all together and then cool. it'll be done. Except for if I decide to add borders, which, you know, I, I usually always add borders to a quilt, make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, so that's that one. I still haven't finished um, the friendship uh, quilt either so we still need to work on that is your and friendship one like the one i started before my sewing room got blasted um no it's um it's the it's actually the potato chip block that's what oh, they okay. that's what they kind of call it the they're two and a half by four and a half inch strips but i put in um the solid piece and the way you arrange it in there, it, it kind of looks like a friendship star. So I'm calling it friend chip <laughs> block. Nice. Oh, chip. <laughs> okay. Yeah, friend chip. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now let me okay. see here. How and here, here's the one that they're asking about, Katie. Um, this is the. Collage quilt. That's pretty. It's a horse. Is that a panel or are you going to actually be piecing that? It's applique. Nice. And that looks um, like fun. Yeah, well, you can join us. It's um, I'll be doing it in not not tomorrow, but the following Sunday. So, well, you it'll probably take you a while to get mail. Yeah, got, it will. Got the pattern. Unless she has from, a PDF of it. Yeah, I don't know if she does or not. Um, it's Tony, uh, Whitney, uh -huh. designs. I'll put. I'll write it in the chat. Okay. I um talked about it yesterday when I was live, and uh, I was just okay, talking Mary, about we'll it. Okay, see you later. Sorry. That's okay. Tony. Let's see. <laughs> Patty G says she's looking forward to the collage. Okay, let's see. Let's get this. Psst. And the pattern is right. called Summer Breeze. And it's 25 by 27. Nice. So it's, 
it's a nice uh, wall hanging. Um, bye, Jay, Mary. Yep, somebody had to bolt. Okay, so that'll be what? What day is that? Not next. Tomorrow's What's the, the date? 14th. Today, tomorrow's the 14th, so seven days from there would be uh, the 20th. 20th. If it's seven days from today's day or tomorrow's day? From tomorrow's if day. From, from tomorrow's day, it would be the 21st. Yeah. We'll start it on Sunday the 21st. And um, I picked out my fabrics yesterday for that and everything. But I'll go, I'll go over that again. Plus, I'm going to take a picture of all these fabrics and I'll post it on my Facebook uh, okay. group, so people will see what I picked. I don't think that comes in a kit, but I do know that some of the quilt shops that get those patterns, they they will qu quilt them up or kit them up. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can get the you can get the kits on those. All right. Cool. Was there another question? Hi, Laura Lynn. It's mom and pops quilt. Look pop. who's look look who drifted into the channel. Hey babe. How's it going in Nuke? And then your husband hubby's here. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. He's in Nuke, not at home. Hey Miss Laura Lynn, how you doing? All right. <clears throat> Nora has her butt parked right in front of my pedal. <laughs> I would love to do the collage quilt, but I have too many irons in the fire right now. I do not want to start any new projects until I get caught up. That makes perfect sense. Yep. I didn't want to either, but <laughs> I got talked into it. Oh, my other new project that I wasn't going to start any new projects this year, but will be the um, festivals and fireworks. It's a free pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I'm actually going to start that tomorrow. And oh, um, cool. Kay from the Purple Wall, um, she talked me into doing it with her. So she's going to be on the channel with me tomorrow. Nikolai says he's still in port. He is. Are y'all leaving tonight or you're spending the night? When does he go out? He was supposed to have left this morning. But there's issues with that ship, as always. That ship has big time problems. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's like they're trying to, I think they're trying to stretch it out for as long as they can. Because I don't, honey, is it 2026 or 2025 y'all get your new ship? can't remember which year he said it was. I'm thinking it was 2026. Oh, he says he doesn't know yet. Oh, that he was answering Frank. Okay. Hi, Fallon. Hi, Fallon. Welcome to the channel. Ah, I'm making a mess up here. Welcome to I'm the looking... stream. Yep. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I got that side done. Debating on whether I want to do an open seam on this or not. Mm, maybe I won't. Since uh, it's the back, I don't really need to do that. Okay, so about this piece. Oh. Sorry for the noise, you guys. Everything's got to roll off my little tight space. Okay, now I'm going to get this side put on first. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to do the, the um, border. I'm piecing the border now. So that I can sew it onto the solid center. 
And um, before I get them all sewn on, though, I got to take one of the five inch blocks and I'm going to cut it apart or I'm going to cut a block that will turn into a five inch because I'm going to piece my quilt label so that it's part of a block. It's not just stuck on top of something. <clears throat> Um, How you doing, Fallon? What were you going to say, Teresa? Um, Catherine would like to see the friendship block, so if you don't mind, I'll show that to her. Yeah, go ahead. You can do what you want. It's fine. I'm not going to complain. This is the friendship block. So each, so I used a, a jelly roll. Okay, and I cut the jelly roll down to each strip. I cut um, two and a half by four and a half. So you just, you'll get eight of those. And then at the end, you'll you'll have enough to cut out um, two, two and a half inch square. So you do that to the whole jelly roll. And then you... Um, Get a contrasting fabric and cut those strips. So this solid one will be on the lower right-hand corner of every block. So this is like the unit. I'll hold it there for a minute so you can see. And I have several videos. Um, if you go over to my channel and look under live stream or under live, you'll see some of the videos on, on there. So um, you need to, four units like this to make the big block. And the big block looks like this. Hi, Karen. How are you? Glad to see you here. Okay, now we're going to do the bottom. So this black is going to be on the bottom left. All right. And where's my other turquoise piece? Because that's going to be in the center. Black. All right. Now let me see what I can find for. I'll show you these in just a couple minutes, you guys. Hmm. Once I get them all together. Let's see here. Don't have any. Wow, I really don't. That's interesting. Well, I'll just cut one. How about that? Okay. Make make sure this is not one of them I cut down. Oh, of course it is. Okay. Five inch. Lori Colgan says, hi, Katie. Hi, Lori. And we have D. I cannot pronounce that last name. <laughs> hello. I'm just going to say hello, D. Oh, hi, Diane. D is Diane. Oh, okay. I'm putting that pieces. I'm putting those pieces again together. Wait till you see them. She helped design this backing because I was stuck. Actually, she did all the math. No, actually, she did all the drawing and the math. But we were having fun with it the other night. Because I had an idea in my brain. I just didn't know what to do with it. Um, so, Linda, the um, potato chip block already existed out there. Uh, but... And I don't know if I'm the only one that decided to add the star to it or not. But as far as I know, I made that up. <laughs> so so I took an existing block and made it different. And, then, and the main reason why I did that is because I wanted some there to be some place 
I didn't want the whole quilt just to be all scrappy. I wanted there to be a place where your eye could rest. And so, you know, your eye kind of rests on that friendship star. I don't know if you saw Katie or not. Um, hey, hang on. Let me fix. Wait a minute. I need to put that. Other... Yeah, show me. Oh, wow. That's pretty. That is that friendship uh, star. Yeah, kind of looks like the friendship star. So, yeah, this is. I wonder what the original. Uh, I wonder who who created it first, and what the original name for it was. Um, yeah, I saw. I actually saw the um, potato chip block over on um, Quilt Roadies. Mm -hmm. But she called it something else, and it was a pattern that. It's probably about 15 years old or so. I'd have to go uh -huh. back and watch. I can't remember what she called it. And But mm. then I saw, I can't remember who it was, but I was on, I think it was Pat Sloan's um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Or some, it was somebody's Facebook. Um, somebody was doing this and they were calling it potato chip blocks that's interesting and i thought well, that would be fun to do with a jelly roll you know because i yeah. i can never figure out what to do with a jelly roll you know um and i think the jelly roll is my like my least favorite pre-cut hey diane do you want to come on live see if she wants to or not and then you and Ther then you, Teresa, you can meet her you'll like her she's really cool She's laid back like you and me are. Okay, I think I need to add one more on here. Yep, so we got the dark on that side, so I need a different color on the other side. So what yeah, do I um, pick? Yeah, Fallon, I heard that Brenda from uh, Mount Scrapmore also did this potato chip block. But it seemed like once I saw people making it, everybody was making it, so... Uh, but the first place that I saw it was a quilt roadies. Her name is Anna. And I don't think that I saw it on Brenda's Facebook. Can't remember whose it was, but anyway. That's it. Okay. If you Okay, so right now I'm sewing the last block for the bottom because I'm going to attach the top and bottom first. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to get all the piecing done first, of course. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I need to look at something real quick. I need to see where I'm supposed to put that um, book label. Oh, down here on that end. So it'll be on the long side. Okay. I'm good. It's all good. I thought I made a mistake already. Nope. Didn't. Hello, John. Let's see. Balance says, yep, that's where I saw it first. Then I heard it was called other things. Yeah. Yeah. And so are you in your room or are you hanging out somewhere? I'm talking to Nicola. Oh. Look up the oh, look up the chat Ada. Or is that supposed to be Essa? <laughs> Let's see. What did he he must have said something I missed? Hi, confident quilter. I didn't see you come in. <laughs> Diane says, once again, late to the party. Your backing pieces look vaguely familiar. Yep, they do, don't they? Nikolai says, how's the four-legged critters, Asa? Oh, one of them's got her butt parked right between my foot and my pedal. And the other one is laying right next to my desk. He's not letting me get out of his sight. So they're moping. And they've been really quiet. So I know they're missing their daddy. They were a little uh, confused because Nikolai, Nikolai was supposed to went to Denmark first. 
to be with his sister and the weather prevented him from going. So they had seen all this production because as soon as they see a suitcase move, they know something's happening. They're really smart like that. And they, and they knew that it wasn't time for him to leave yet because they just, it's odd how dogs know, know how long someone's going to be here versus how long they're not going to be here. And then they start acting weird like, a, I don't know, a few days right before he's due to come home, like they know he's coming home. It's very odd behavior for both of them. Yeah. But I guess dogs have a sense of time. Yeah. But they're missing you, honey. I I'm going to show you in the top and bottom stuff so you can see what it looks like so far, okay? Maybe I should go ahead and sew them on the top and the bottom. Okay, so this is the bottom. Joy says, what did I miss? Had to take the dog out for a while. I'm piecing um, the pieces, piece part for the back. And this is the top of it. Hi, Kathy. Thanks. Hi, Kathy. W welcome to the channel. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I might just do that. Let me press the rest of this all the way out. <laughs> Diane's going to see her hard work get done. It's put the 36 that way and 40 something the other way. Oh, so that's right. Hard. She did the math for you. Yeah, I told her what I was trying to do, and I showed her what I had, and she did the math. Because I, I'm, here's the thing. I'm a, like I, you've heard me say this before, I'm a hands-on visual learner, but I, I'm still kind of a infant when it comes to the mechanics of how quilts come together. I mean, I can understand it, but I really don't always understand the math that goes into it. I'm not I'm not in deficit in math. I just don't understand how to do the two together. Right. Not always anyway. I can measure, I can cut, I can guess, but if you if you ask me how much yardage I probably have used for this quilt, I don't know. I know I used two yards of background for the front, almost two. There's like a little bit of left in the front, you know, tiny bit of background left. And I mean, it's not even enough to qualify as leftover yardage because that's how little of it was left. So I used almost all the two yards. This backing piece I'm using is a one yard. And then I trimmed the selvage off of it. And then trimmed the sides to make sure that, you know, they were straight and not crooked. Now, as far as the blocks themselves, I just used one um, charm pack, which made 42 blocks with all the little sashings and stuff in between. Because all the sashing and the, that first uh, small border that looks like the background, that was all of that two yards I used. And then I used, um, I made two borders. Um, the first border used a yard and a yard and three quarters, I think. And then the bigger border, which was a five inch border, that one used the whole yard that I had. But I still had some left over of that one. So technically it probably only used three quarters of a yard, maybe. Hi, Kirk. Yeah, welcome to the channel. Somebody came in here named Kirk. I didn't see that. Okay. This is as press as it's going to be for right now. All I know right. people, ask, people ask me too, and I say, okay, I started with a jelly roll and a yard of other of this other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much I, I know. Really yeah, exactly. I really don't know the 
mechanics of it yet or the mathematical part of it yet. And I, yeah, I'm assuming that's going to. Sometimes I'm just making something up so I don't even have anything written down yet, you know, so. Um. Yeah, um, Linda, you have to go to my page and then you click on live and there's um, a couple of videos that actually have the picture of the chip in there, but I called it stars and chip. So I need to go fix that. But um, so look for stars and chips. And I will. Um, let me grab this link and copy it. Hold on a second. I'll get it for you. It, just like Tiffany does. That's what she said. Yeah, this is how this little quilt's coming together. It just was in my head. I didn't really have any set measurements other than I knew I was going to use a charm pack. Right. And um, I tried to, well, I started out drawing, I had the vision in my brain what I wanted to do with the little blocks. And then I drew it out on paper, but then when I went to measure it, I'm like, this doesn't make, it was confusing me. Cause I'm like, why yeah. doesn't the math work? Cause it sh I was thinking it should have still been a five inch block. But then I decided, well, why don't I just come in here and take uh, two charms out and make a block? along with the sashing and then measure it it turned out that it was five no four and seven eighths so it wouldn't have mattered and because there's pinking on the um the outer the outer squares that had that pinking around it when i measured it i i wasn't it was probably not the way it should have been measured put it that way so i decided well this is not acceptable because people are going to be saying well my block's not five inches what what do i do so i decided let's cut it down to four and a half and we could avoid the problem altogether and so that all the blocks were trimmed down to four and a half Um, Joy T, what question are you talking about? If I missed a question, repeat it. Hello, Kim. Hi, Kim. I think I missed a question. Frank says, haven't had a Yahoo in a long time. <laughs> That's funny. I don't drink Yahoo's. I don't, I, like them. I don't think I've I ever rather, had a Yahoo. Yeah. You know, I would rather drink a real chocolate milk, not that fake stuff. It's funny, when I go to the United States, I definitely get me some chocolate milk. Right now, I'm pinning uh, the top on one side. So then I'll show it to you, and then I'll start piecing the sides. And I'm going to have to take a few minutes to make that one uh, five-inch block into a piece block for my quilt label. So I'm going to be cutting some pieces for that and then trim it down to five-inch. But right now, I need to make sure that this lays flat in here. And I don't end up with a, what do you call it, a wave? Yeah. You mentioned Diane's, earlier. Diane's math is right on spot for this, though. Oh, good. Because it, it fit like it was supposed to. Good job, Diane. Yeah, I really appreciate the help. She's 
this is what's what's so great about this community and all of us being friends and stuff. There's always someone that knows how to help. Mm -hmm. And doesn't mind helping instead of, you know, be, making a big production of it. Yeah. Because I've had that happen in the past. You know, you always run into people who are like, well, why do I need to spend time showing you how to do something? Why don't you figure it out yourself? Well, those are the kind of people you, you know, <laughs> want to stay away from. <laughs> yep. Some people just don't people make very good teachers. That's no. Nope. You definitely have to have patience. <laughs> oh, Troy T says no question. Okay. All right. I thought I missed something. Uh, Donna Dixon says she loves Yahoo. They have strawberry flavor. Yeah, I know. You know, I think my husband would probably drink them because they have something similar here. It's a lot like that chocolate drink. But it's not chocolate milk as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not drinking it. It's funny. I'm just selective, I guess. It's the same thing with ice cream. I'm, I don't eat ice milk. Who eats ice milk? It doesn't mind the taste of it. Or do they even make ice milk anymore? I can remember growing up, sometimes my mom would buy ice milk to save money. When money was tight, yeah. she would um, buy that instead of ice cream. It's funny how it tastes we all live in the same United States, but y'all eat different things in out in the east than we do out west <laughs> i like, noticed i have never seen in the grocery store ice milk that's so that's right because i didn't see any in california at all and i've never seen yahoo didn't don't know anything about that <laughs> that's funny there's a lot of things i noticed that california didn't have that florida has the other thing is, is I tried to find fresh ochre. There's no such thing. It's not out here. Uh, no. And, and I asked uh, the produce department um, why they didn't have ochre. He says, well, they're normally in the summer. I said, well, this is summer. He says, yes, but that doesn't mean we'll get it necessarily. It just depends on if someone happens to farm it or not. And big majority of the time they don't. Right. I'm like, wow. You would think with uh, Latin Americans... Because okra's in that, and so is it in Creole people. They all love okra. Yeah. We don't have, um, now we might nowadays, but when I used to go to the restaurant a lot, we didn't have um, grits. Yeah. I, I didn't know what that was for a long time. <laughs> when I went to New York, the first time I went to New York, and we went, uh, my friend took me to a they ate. They like to eat this particular breakfast restaurant. That's really. Uh, it's in Brooklyn, and um, I, when I was ordering my breakfast, I ordered tea. I didn't want. I didn't mean hot tea. I was thinking iced tea. She comes back right. with a, a cup of, uh, with a tea bag and hot water, and I'm like, no, I want iced tea, and she says. You have to say iced tea. You can't just say tea up here. Most people <laughs> don't drink iced tea like you do in the South. Right. And 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 not all places brew it either if they do sell it. So you have to make sure you say, do you have any brewed iced tea? Right. Otherwise, you'll get the fake crap. That was the one, one of the things I really enjoyed when I went... Um, to Tennessee and all those places um, with Brandon mm -hmm. uh, quite a few years ago for a family reunion was mm -hmm. every place I'd stopped. I, I, 
every restaurant we went to, I went, I would like a glass of sweet tea, please. <laughs> I love the sweet tea now. <laughs> I got where I, I got, I've gotten where when I do order iced tea, it's unsweetened because I can't deal with all that sugar in it. Yeah. They put enough sugar in it, it can walk by itself. That's what I tell everybody anyway. Works by itself. Yeah. It's a joke. They do. Yeah. But I can remember I can remember my mom putting like two cups of sugar in a gallon of tea, and I'm thinking, that is a oh ton my of word, sugar. that's a lot. But, so you know, when I was growing up, and she would do that, I would add, you know, besides the ice, I would like fill my glass like three quarters full of the tea, and then a quarter of that would be an additional water just to water down that sweetness because I couldn't stand it. And so as an adult, I just buy uns I just drink unsweetened tea and add my own to it what little bit I want in it. And it's very little right. that I want that's, in it. That's what I usually do too. Yeah. Have you ever, uh, have you ever had, um, Robin wants to know if you ever had a uh, gator? No. That's like yeah. asking me if I've ever eaten seal meat. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, have you tried making any of your homemade starch yet? No, not yet. No. Not yet. I've kind right. of been, I, you know what? It took me, it takes so long setting up multiple lives for a month. I can't believe how many hours it takes. Or I'm just slow at it one. I spent last night working on that, trying to do all of, you know, as much of January as I could get done. And part of February, since I'm going to be leaving to go to the States. So I hadn't had a chance. But while I'm in the States, I might just come back with some starch. How about that? Buy the starch and bring it home, powder form. Yeah. You should be able to buy it like that, right? Um. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I can still bring home some best press a little bit, but I need to find some unscented from somewhere. If I do, and then be in small bottles, that way I can use it outside. I use um, Stay Flow from uh, Walmart. It's so much cheaper. I saw where people use that, and they say it's just as good. Yep. And I guess if you want it to smell, you could add like lavender drops or something to it, whatever you like. Yeah, you can use essential oils, and I would think that would be a lot safer than some chemical that they created to make that scent. I would think you could anyway. Have you have you ever noticed when you buy fabric that sometimes when you press the fabric, you can smell a smell on it, like uh, uh, it's like a perfume smell almost? Yeah. I wonder if that's because people are using hand lotion on their hands or something. I don't know. Because some of this fabric that uh, I'm messing with right now, I it's not the first time I've smelled it with this particular cuts that I've been working with. Because I remember smelling it when I was making the party mix built with this same uh, fabric. Wow. That does not look very nice on the back. Um, Jody, oxtail stew is delicious, although I don't actually use oxtail stew to make it, but um, I do have the recipe and it is uh, it is really good stew. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? You know, my husband normally will eat anything, usually, but there's one thing he won't eat, and that's Osco Buco or however you say it. That's what? Osco Buco. It's that big piece of bone that some people, it's a cheap piece of beef. Oh. I'm probably not pronouncing it properly. Patty G says, I use Stay Flow diluted and put it in a spray bottle. I also put it in a water brush pen for FPP. A gallon lasts for a long time. Cool. Yep. I just don't think, you know, I think the, the starch will come in handy for, like, problematic scenes or something. 
I really don't see the point of me spraying yards of fabric because I I feel like my um I'm pretty consistent with how I sew as far as you know sewing sewing. I wonder if Diane, there it is, also Buco. That's how it's called. Nikolai just posted it in the channel, the name of it. See, that might not be a California thing, um, Teresa, or West Coast thing. Oh, um, I remember seeing it in Florida, but I didn't know what it was. My mother never made it. Kelly says that that is veal, and it's delicious. And I don't eat veal. So, yeah, we don't I, either. I would it's, never know if that's good or not. <laughs> I don't eat anything that's a baby. Sorry. <laughs> Let me see not even stuff. eggs. I don't eat eggs either. Only because, really, um, because I'm allergic to them. So, that's why. <laughs> All right, I'm about to get myself confused, I think. Let's look at this top. So I have this, I, I want this to be facing down because this is the directional on this one. Italian so grilled shake stew with tomatoes, garlic, etc. is yummy. Do y'all know what, what they do to get veal? I will never eat it. No, not really. Uh, let's not talk about. I know how they how they get veal, and that's why I don't eat it. So, <laughs> Italian veal shake stewed up with tomatoes, garlic, yum. Kelly says. But see, I like lamb, but I won't eat a grown up sheep meat because it smells terrible. Yeah, they didn't process it right. Because I grew up on sheep and. I've had goat, but I I don't I've eat lamb. I've never had goat meat, but I love mm -hmm. lamb. And, uh, like goat's milk, it can be really good or it can be really bad. If they don't, oh yeah, if you don't, if you don't clean those udders good and clean your hands, and it kind of contaminates the flavor of the milk and. Yeah, because their break. milk sac is so close to their back end. And you got to, um, I prefer goat's milk really, really cold. I, I would not, not eat or drink um, warm goat's milk. I think milk is, only way to drink milk is cold. They sell milk here in cartons that's not refrigerated. Now, I I might, like if I was starving and that was my only choice, I would probably eat those things. But if I don't have to, and like my, and also my um, uncle used to raise rabbit and they mm -hmm. would eat the, they would eat the rabbits and, you know, that, well, that, you know, that's okay, but. I couldn't do it. Now I can go out and shoot. I could. Well, I. That's. Let's back that up. Did you see what my I, husband said? I would be okay if Brandon went out and shot a rabbit, and we had rabbit stew. I I could do that, but. <laughs> yeah, it's about how it's handled that you don't like. Sounds like. It's like if uh, I know somebody used dogs to run a deer, I don't want any of that meat. No, thank you. My husband says, I only eat uh, when Cat makes the veggie salads. Yeah, he's eaten more broccoli and stuff in the last 12 years than he has his entire life because I have vegetables. But you like vegetables. You said you did. Uh, Andrea says, also, never keep the bucks nearby the milking barn because they're musk. Yeah, I've heard that uh, the bucks have really bad smells to them. Yeah, exactly, Andrea. Keep the, the bucks away for sure. 
Um, well, yeah. I'm about to have this other piece on. I need to and take a I little break, Katie. Okay, go. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Too much tea. <laughs> I like your comment, Kelly, about having no scruples. We love lamb. Bought a whole one once from a local farm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, they raise lamb. They they raise lambs here and in September they cull a herd and then they um process it and everything and then it gets sent throughout Greenland. Candace says I'll eat any meat, but no organs of any kind. I don't eat organ meat either. Denise, look it up. It's very upsetting. I don't want to discuss it here. Yeah, let's not. Uh, Joyce says, goat is yummy. I make curry goat often. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. Pennsylvania mountain shrimp, native brook trout on an open fire. Yep, that sounds yummy. Andrea says, I raise meat rabbits and they are great, but I think wild rabbit is tough and gamey tasting, in my opinion. Yeah, probably, because you don't know the age of the rabbit when you kill it. The older they get, the more gamey they get. Any wild animal does. I know my dad didn't like killing older bucks because the meat would be tough. And you can tell an old buck by the, the way the bottom of the rack looks. It'll be really extremely thick and it'll, it'll have this tough texture on it. And those two usually are very older. They're much older bucks. Here, I can't tell if they're older bucks or not. It's kind of hard. I've only been on a hunt a couple of times where I've seen them shot. So, so I don't know. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay. I've got this part on. Now I'm going to press it. And then I'll get started on the sides. Frank says, I've been shooting things for 55 years. Joy, I love curry. I When I first got exposed to curry, I couldn't decide whether I hated it or whether I liked it. But I discovered something about curry that people probably don't even notice this happens. But when I smell curry, because I don't always have an appetite, you know, for eating. And, um, but curry triggers and want, and I, my stomach makes noises and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to eat. And I got where I really like making it, especially with salmon. It's so good on salmon. Yeah. Now I know why this didn't press right. I was raised on a farm ranch 
So I, I know how a lot of that. Yeah. Stuff is done. Mother, you know, yeah. Cattle, My mother sheep. never made curry. I think that the you know, northern United States, y'all get exposed to a lot of things people from the south don't. Maybe that's why Teresa. Could be. Um, and living on a ranch definitely will do it. Yeah, and I I prefer, you know, ranch hamburger or meat from a you know, from the cow. Yeah. Something that not from the grocery store, but not a not everybody can do that, you know. No. Nope. Or um we Brandon um gets a hunting tag for elk and so we usually have elk or deer in the refrigerator but nice. after i left home i um became a vegetarian <laughs> really yeah i was a vegetarian for years i mean i still ate i wasn't like a complete 100 percent vegan or anything like that i still like to eat bacon that was like my favorite thing. So I still ate bacon. And, um, but then when Brandon and, and I got married, there, there's no way he, he would go for all the vegetarian things that I like to make, you know? <laughs> so it was back to meat, but I still don't eat hamburger from the grocery store. I, for some reason, it just tastes like really greasy. You know, they they put a lot of add a lot of fat to it. So I prefer to kind of uh, make my own hamburger. Let's see how many of these do I need. Can you hang on a minute? Bye, Kelly. See you later, Kelly. Mm -hmm. No, elk is pretty good, Frank. I like it. Junk. <laughs> I and, love um, black pudding. Hmm. Did you read the ingredients of that? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't eat it. No, thanks. No, thank you. Robin no, says I've had my sportsman license since 16. Melissa says I think about, I think about, uh, I think I'm about to be vegan. My daughter is partial vegan, which I don't know why. She wasn't raised that way. Uh, Joy says I just ate okra stew and curried lentil. Mm, that sounds young. Yeah, I wasn't raised a vegetarian either. I mean, we did have a lot of potatoes. <laughs> For sure. Growing up in Idaho, how can you get by without eating potatoes? Yeah, you know what? I was thinking about what, when I got ready to um, come back home, I was going to buy a cup, you know, three, a, a little bit of uh, Idaho potatoes and put them in my um, suitcase. And then when I get when when June gets here, I'm going to plant them outside in the ground and grow me some potatoes from it. Oh, good idea. Yeah. You could go to the okay. um go to the feed store and buy the eyes, you know, the 
little potato ones. Eyes? Yeah, potato mm -hmm. eyes. Okay, because I want that to bring be... a couple different ones back with me because I yeah. kind of miss some. I miss some types of American potatoes, and Idaho is one of them because they make great baked potatoes and other. You know, they're just, they're just tasty to me. Okay, so I have the top and the bottom on here now. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. So let me show you. And then I'm going to start doing the piecing for the sides. So here's the top. And awesome. this is the bottom. Looks good, Katie. Yeah, coming along. So now what I'm going to do is get to start piecing for the sides. And I need to make sure I don't goof up one side and forget to put my little quilt label on it. So make, park that right on top of my keyboard. Okay. Let me look at my... Katie, when are you doing that Valentine's wall hanging? Is it by the... By Fat Quarter. Yes, it's by Fat Quarter Shop. And as soon as we finish up this project, we're going to start on that one. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be because that project shouldn't take but a couple of days to do the well, I should be able to sew all of it in one sew and then do the back of it the next sew. So I'm thinking the first part of February is maybe the end of January, first part. Depends on how quickly I get all this put together. Because I'm trying to do from beginning to end, so you can see the whole process of this little quilt. At least that's my goal. And I wanted you to be able to see me putting it together instead of me pre-sewing it and then say, hey, this is how it is. Okay, where's my picture? Andrea says she won't eat watermelon when she was a kid we were camping and dad cut into a watermelon and there was a snake in there he wow. cut it in half and that was it for me well, how did the snake did get the inside snake? of a watermelon yeah wow that's there, crazy there had to have been a okay a hole in there or something must have been sounds like that's weird very Okay, let me see here how many of these we need. I need to measure these again. Do you have a line for your tags from Sweetwater? Do I have what? It says line, but I think it's supposed to be link. <laughs> oh, do I have yeah, a link? Yeah. yeah, hold on a minute. Let me get it. I didn't think to put that in here, but yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> One of my things I forgot to do. Let's see here. Let's get a sweet water link. All right. Grumpy John says, I just finished decorating the guest room, so now I'm going to get my craft room back and hopefully buy a Brother V3 embroidery machine. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, Sweetwater subscriptions. And Andrea, was the snake dead already? Or you might not know. If your dad cut it in half, then. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I didn't uh -huh. eat hot dogs for a long time because one time on a camping trip when I was a little kid, um, 
I ate too many hot dogs. And then we rode in the back of the pickup truck, had, um, you know, a camper shell thing. And I rode back there and I got car sick and, oh, I couldn't eat hot dogs forever after that. <laughs> Can you see whether that looks like a link or not? Yeah. For some reason, I can't. When I put links in now, it doesn't look like links to me. It's weird. I, it did it to me too, but after a couple of seconds, it it fixed itself. So yeah, it looks okay here. Okay. All yeah. right. Got it then. Okay. There you go. I posted both links. One's for the main page, and the other one's for the one that I'm a part of. Okay. I need to have one. Well, she said it bled, so she thinks that it was alive. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it had to get in there somehow. <laughs> yep. Sounds to me like it did. I've eaten rattlesnake. <laughs> That's probably... The weirdest thing I've. I mean, all the things people eat. And um, I've eaten cougar, mountain lion. Meat now. Oh, I didn't know people ate cats. Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. Um, we cut the back straps up and kind of ate eat them the same way you do an elk steak or deer steak. And then the rest of it, we turned it into jerky. And it was the best darn jerky I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. Andrea said the link worked. So. Okay, great. Thank you, Andrea. Yep. Appreciate the help. I'm going to put of those turquoises in here on the sides, too. Um, Lori's probably talking about snakes. She said, I read the jungle, and I won't eat them. Yeah. I only ate them once when I was a kid. That's my uncle. Oh. Uh, killed my a rattlesnake and then... My they mom grew up eating chitlins, and that's eating what? Chitlins. Never heard of it. It's the, um, it's uh, <laughs> it is uh, kind of gross. It's the intestinal. I think it's the intestine parts of a hog. But see, her oh. family lived in Alabama and they were very poor. They were cotton croppers. You know, they cropped them. So and she had 13 kids to feed. So eating that kind of food, I guess, was a thing. Yeah. And she loved liver, and I can't stand liver. Yeah, I, I don't really care for liver. Liver is disgusting. She would fry it, you know, batter it and fry it, and I still mm -hmm. couldn't eat it. It's just too bitter. Yeah, my mom used to cook it, too, and like I, I would eat the fried onions, but <laughs> not the liver. Yeah. The liver was always disgusting. Okay. Those are done. Two sides for this. We're gonna work our way from the center out on these. The Jungle is a book about meat processing plants. 
Yeah, you know, I'd rather not read books about processing plants because that just, yeah, I don't want to know. There's some things like that I don't want to know about. Yeah. Because we have no control over how we get our food. So unless you live on a farm or can farm your own, yeah, I don't want to know. When I was growing up now, until we moved to Lake City, my mom and dad always had pigs and calves and chickens and the whole range of things to eat. And she and she raised a garden. And we fished and he hunted, you know, so all of that was done. So mom right. didn't buy much meat from the grocery store because she just, whenever she wanted to cook a chicken, she'd just go outside and get one. Chop its head off. Give us the bird say, here, clean it. So I grew up, that kind of thing didn't bother me what he was doing. And then every winter when dad would kill a couple bucks, he would also slaughter a pig. And then he would take some of the pig, pig meat and put it with the deer meat and make sausage out of it. And man, deer with deer deer pork sausage is tasty. But when we moved to Lake City, they got all things changed. Let me see here. I'm gonna put this on this side. Andrea says, I think chitlins is a southern thing. The stores down here all have them at the butcher counter. Really? Wow. <laughs> Nikolai says, not in front of me, though. What is it you're not doing in front of me? Oh, process. Dad used to process the, the, the animals, and that didn't bother me. But people write about processing plants and show Things that no one should really see, especially if they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. I don't want to know about it because I can't un, I can't unvision. What do you call it? Unsee that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I watched a movie called. Um, it's called the movie's called The Remaining, and you guys don't go watch it. But I I didn't know what to expect. It has to do with the, uh, the um. What is it called? That that word is uh, it's it has to do with the Bible and people going to heaven and then Satan being set loose on earth. That part of it, the rapture. It had to do with the rapture, and I had bought the movie thinking it was gonna be decent or something. Oh my god. I can't unsee what was in that movie. And it was disturbing. If people were trying to scare you into religion, that wouldn't work either. Yeah. Because there was some of them that didn't get caught up in the rapture that were church people and bad things happened to them anyway. It was yeah. just crazy. Whoever produced that movie sucked at it. Or they have a good imagination? Maybe. I mean, the demons that they had in it was just... I, ha I haven't watched it. <laughs> yeah, you might not want... Well, it depends on if you're sensitive to scary movies to start with like I am. I didn't know it was a horror movie. I didn't see that in the... Uh-oh, I just made this one up. Yeah, I, I saw this one watch horror um, I, I used to could watch scary movies but I haven't been able to watch them for a really long time I think since uh, uh, right after my husband first husband ended his life I after that I couldn't watch any anymore and I don't like movies that harms that deliberately kills kids in it as a horror flick I don't like those kinds of movies because I'm a mom and I don't think that killing children for a movie is fun. Right. Even though it's all fake movies, it's still 
I'm noticing more and more movies have kids in them where they're experiencing bad things when they should be having a good time as a young kid. They had this movie out um, about Thanksgiving and they made a horror movie about it. And I'm like, really? You're going to ruin a special holiday like that for this? I don't understand that. Hi, Math Geek. Bye, Math Geek. <laughs> See you she later. Just she just popped in for a minute. Okay. Uh-oh, uh that didn't come all the way out. I didn't have this one laid down end to end properly. I can't really do like real life scary movies. I could yeah. do like um, alien scary movies. Yeah. That, those, those, those are doable. Yeah, yeah, those don't bother me either. Those are doable. But that's like those Saw movies. I can't watch those at all. Just seeing the movie trailers is bad enough. <laughs> but you know what? It's cool, Teresa. Is we're they moved the the release date for the new Godzilla movie up to, uh, from April the twelfth to April the second. Guess who's going to be watching that movie? Yeah. Me and my honey. <laughs> I am so totally stoked about that. So you'll go to the movies while you're here in the States? Yeah. There, it, uh, for a movie like that, yes. It depends on what kind of movie it is before I even go to one. And usually I try to go, we, we'll probably try to go during a matinee hour. So there's not as many people at a matinee. I definitely won't go on a Friday night. Too many people. Has anybody used a half square tri triangle roll? Roll? Joy T wants to know. What is a half square triangle roll? That's the papers, I think she's talking about. Oh, you about. mean the papers? Yeah, I do. I use them all the time. Especially if I have a massive amount of them to make. I find it easier because I don't like drawing lines. And that's one step I just totally don't like. Yeah. Nora, you're going to have to get off my pedal because you're it's slipping away from me the way you're laying on it. She keeps moving my pedal and it's getting further and further away from my foot. They say iguana tastes like chicken. I'll never know. Neither will I. You know what my husband and my daughters are going to be eating when we get to when he gets to the U.S. Or my my oldest daughter, I mean, her and Nikolai are going to be doing sushi. Well, I hope they enjoy that. <laughs> they do enjoy it, but I'm not going. I'll I'll just have something else. But they've eaten sushi together before, so it'll be fun watching them revisit that. I'll just have chicken teriyaki or something. Okay, I got the center part done. Now let's see what I can mix the rest of these two. Yeah, Jody. Um, Katie said, yeah, she likes them. She prefers using the triangle paper. I have a quilt top in the sewing room that has 480 half square triangles in it. And I used triangle paper and I've got all 480 of them made by using paper. 
in one day. Wow. It took me three days to do 484 packs. I don't know why I, I find four patches such a pain. Eeny, meeny, money, no. Might as well use the green. Okay. So we got, let's do, let's do this. Okay. Let me ask you guys this one and this one together? Or this one and this one together? Uh, either one. Yeah, they both work. Yeah. Because the other, the, uh, there's a lilac that's going to be used on the other one. I wonder if I put these two together. That's light and dark. And this is light and dark. That would probably work. Yep. I think I'll do it like that. Maybe. Okay. Let me go. What Missouri Star Quilt are you going to do? Ooh. I haven't thought about doing a Missouri Star one. Oh, Joy says hold them up again. This one and this one? Andrea says either one there are similar. And then here's the other one, Andrea uh, Joy. Yeah, I say either one. Uh, Joy, I don't know if I'm going to do anything relating to Missouri Star. To be truthful on that. I will figure that out when I get back from QuiltCon. I'll see what I'll see what the summer gives me. I'm also I also have a trip that I will be doing in uh, the end of June to go up North Greenland. Just um to Ilulisset because I won that gift card. Um and so I've been in talks with the travel company that donated the money on what it is I want to do by coming to Ilulisset. And the plan is going to be something like I'm going to do a iceberg whale safari. And I'm also going to do a boat ride up to the ice cap and sit and wait for it to cab. Hopefully it'll cab while I'm there. Um, and uh, they have cabins that are um, built above the ice cap. And we're going to spend a couple of nights above the ice cap in the cabins. They look oh. like little. So, um, yep. So that's the plan. So I'm going to get a lot of content just from that. I, I definitely know I'm going to take a zillion pictures yeah. in between videos. I just won't be able to stop because I love, I tell you what, I am in love with icebergs. But it'll be my first time seeing whales, humpback whales in, you know, in, in front of me. Usually it's so far away, I can't hardly see them. All you ever see is their blowhole. But they hang around the icebergs and feed off krill. Um, let me see here. 
Sorry, must have been someone in Sean's channel this morning. Oh, okay. My phone is buffering. I'm going to punch more hexagons. Okay. Jean says, hi, Denise. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I didn't know you had a channel, Jean. Wow, let me check that out. When you get back from the States, you're going to be catching up with your pe Yes, I am. Do you hear that? <laughs> Let me see here. Let me have a look at Jean's. I didn't know Jean had a channel. Did you? Um, Jean who? Jean wrote. Oh, I don't know how to say her name properly. Oh, all I see is court reporting. Two two videos that were one six years ago and one ten years ago. Yeah, I don't think she has a channel. Oh, because she said somebody just subscribed to her channel. Oh. <laughs> She's got 264 subscribers, though. Wow. Yeah, um, everybody has a channel, you know. Yeah. You, when you sign up with YouTube, you get a channel. But not everybody makes videos, so there you go. I don't even see her, her name on here. She's in the chat. Oh, gee, there she is. Are you going to make videos, Jean? Jean, I wanted to do that job after business school, but was steered away from it. So she's got a couple court reporting um, videos. This is going to be interesting, Diane, when it comes together. Oh, she said, I'm not going to make any more videos. The first one went viral. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. I bet it did. People probably thought that was really interesting. Uh, it's I'll been a great career it. in Florida. She says there is a lot of litter. There is a lot of litigation here. Or here. Maybe I am a freelance. Yeah, there's always someone suing somebody. My state has changed. Oh, yeah. One one of our videos has 267,000 views. Wow. And the other one has 36K. Even that, that's good. Yeah. Wow. That is awesome. So there must be a liking for that kind of thing. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Yep. Yes, it has, Frank. It's not the friendly, kind state it used to be. Hope we get a better governor once they once uh DeSantis leaves. Okay, so I'm going to put this purple at the bottom and this purple at the top.
Who's the great judge? Okay. Must have missed something. I don't know who they're talking about. Okay. So now I have this done. I want to make sure I don't put that purple on the same end. Okay. Now then, let me look at that graphic again. All right. So now I need to put one, two. What? Oh, only one on that end? Hmm. Okay. So two there at the bottom. I'm trying to figure out something here, you guys. Okay. On which of these blocks I want to use. Trying to see what will work best. There's another blue one. Haven't used the dark blue ones at all or the dark green ones. Hmm. And there just happens to be purple in the green ones. So, if that purple is going on the top of that one, and this is going on the bottom. There's another purple one. Got quiet. Okay, so what can we ask them to tell us about? How many of you have more than one completely finished quilt? Me. I only have two finished ones. The other one that's almost finished is still sitting in California. Uh oh. I just got to fight with thread. I don't know how many I have. Let me think. Well, I hate when that happens. And it's because I didn't make sure that thread was. And you're asking for completely finished? Yeah, that means totally. Totally done. Finding a label, everything. Yep. Yep, all of it. Siberian says she has lots. Yeah, I have lots too. Um, now, I have lots of quilt tops done. I have like, I don't know, eight, I think. I was no, just going to say, more like 10. I probably have like, Eight, nine, or ten completely done quilts. I don't know. I'd have to count them. <laughs> and then I have quite a few flimsies. <laughs> Why do they call them that? Because they're flimsy. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I just, the, it seems to be a new label for them. Oh, I've heard him called flimsy for a long time. I've always ever heard quilt top. 
Yeah, I heard that too. And then I started watching YouTube and started hearing different names for it. And it was, I was watching a movie left yesterday. I'm trying to think what movie it was. It was an old movie. I don't know, at least 20 years or older. And I heard the word that way. And, you know, I never noticed that word when I saw that movie originally. But I've heard that word used a lot on YouTube. That and this jonesing thing. Yeah. Must be some kind of new um slang these days. I have I've had to leave slang out of my language here because you get blank looks when you use slang. <laughs> Lots of blank. And if I use too many big words, I get the same facial. I don't know what you're talking about, look. That's funny. <clears throat> so how many people, what's the population? The population here in Greenland is around 56,000 total, but it's spread out over all of Greenland. Um, the biggest amount, you know, the biggest population would be Nuke, which is... 18,000, I think. The little town I live in, it's about 34 or 3,500. It used to be 3,800, but not anymore. Everybody's moving to Nuke because Nuke is becoming the new metropolis. Yeah. It's been, it's, the last time I went through there, I couldn't get over how many cranes was everywhere. There is apartments and condos and everything else being built everywhere. It's crazy. Huh. Where so are people to... moving from to there? Um, different parts of Greenland. I mean, there's a lot of them that... Oh. Uh, it's interesting with Greenlanders. They, you know, before Greenland became Greenland... You know, um, the Inuits moved up and down the coast following um, food right. during the summer months. So they migrated back and forth in the winter months in one place. And um, I think that's still in their blood because I've seen a few of them that I know personally who are from here who have been, you know, I've been here 12 years. And they've probably been here at least three quarters of how long I've been here. Then they moved to Nuke and they stay a while in Nuke. And then they moved to Sissy Moot, stay a while in Sissy Moot, this one in particular. And now this one's in Iluvisat. So it's like they migrate up and down the coast. Right. To have something different, I guess. It's pretty interesting, actually. What is a flimsy? It's a quilt See, top. Andrea didn't know what it was either. <laughs> a quilt top that it hasn't been finished yet. I mean, the top is done. Just the quilt top. With no uh, backing or batting. Because I had to ask what they were talking about because... That's the first time I heard that term. I'm like, what does that even mean? Okay, so we can use this one with this one. And then all I gotta do is come up with a plan for the bottom. So this one and this one. So I already got this at the top. Now I have to make two to go down here. So let's put this green on here first. This one is red. Sorry, Nora. You're kind of in my way. Hi, June. 
Andrea says she has a few of those. <laughs> Hi, June. All right, what's the deal with my machine? Why are you eating bread? Hmm. Everything looks okay in there. So I must have not caught it right. Or I need to. I don't know. I might Andrea, need to refread my needle. Andrea says she's been quilting for over 60 years. So she has quite a few uh, finished quilts in that time. I bet. Well. Joy T, are you talking about Tree of Life or are you talking about Carnival? You said somebody made a comment. What was it you said? I have two toppers and two pieces waiting to be connected. Is that what part you read? No. I read um, Andrea's. I have a. I've been quilting for over sixty years. That's a long time. Wow. I bet you have seen all kinds of changes in sixty years. I bet you could write a book about it too. Ah, uh, Tree of Life. She says I'm doing the large uh, secret garden and i'm doing the large hope and i'm going to give the hope to my youngest sister since she's a breast cancer survivor who's been having a really rough time recently oh sorry oh she my sister is what's the word you would call somebody who laughs at danger i guess you could that's the only way I can put it. I laugh at danger. That's the little Lion King one. You remember that? Ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha. I laugh at danger. Something like that. Well, she uh, takes chances she shouldn't take sometimes, and it gets she gets hurt. First time she did it, there is something going on here. All right. Let's rethread it one more time. Um. The first time she did this, she she took my sister's horse off, and Cheryl had told her, because the horse was very spookable. The horse was unreliable anytime you took her outside of the pasture. So she was spooked to everything. So you, there was a chance of you getting hurt. And Karen being hard-headed like she is, seems to be my family's trait. Um, she went riding with the horse down the road in the middle of Osceola National Forest and uh, a big logging truck come flying by while she was on the side of the road with the horse and the horse spooked and reared up and uh, fell over backwards onto Karen and broke her hip in four places. Oh, geez. Now she, Now she was out in the middle of nowhere laying on the ground there was no cell phones back then wait, waiting for someone to see the horse standing next to her and stop and help her so this this past year she she rides her she rides bike she also still rides horses too but she was out riding her bike because her and her husband like to bike a lot and um i guess she was by herself or something and she decided she was going to jump something with her bike. And she crushed and burned. And it broke three of her ribs. And the the handlebars of the bicycle ruptured the implants from her mastectomy surgery. And then um, they had done the one surgery to take the one implant out. And, they, and she had to wait a while. So that was a psychological problem, I guess, for her. And um, then to add insult on the injury, they had to take her back into surgery because uh, one of the ribs that were broken wasn't 
healing properly and they had to go in there and do something to the rib and she woke up in the middle of the surgery. Oh yeah. I, I and because that. of that, she's been suffering from um she sounds like she's suffering from the same symptoms I suffer from, which is PDSD. Because she says she's just not been able to she told I've hardly heard from her. And when I have heard from her, she said she barely can function. She just has had a terrible time dealing with it. And um Aww. so I thought maybe I'll make her a quilt, let her know that I'm thinking about her. And when I get done with it, I'll send it to her. And maybe that'll, you know, perk her up a little bit. But she also likes chickens. So I'm thinking about seeing a, if I can't find a like a little wall hanging quilt top that has a chicken for a, a paper piecing or something and make her one of those too. Because that cause she loves chickens on as well. She has some chickens on someone's farm. So it's been rather tough for her. And she's yeah, she's three say. years yeah, and she's three years younger than me. Okay, let me see how I want to make this quilt label. can't say I've never been hurt on a horse because I have. You know, I had two horses that that when I first started barrel racing, they kept the first two were bad horses for barrel racing. And um one like one didn't have a stop button. So he would just run run through the barrel and then run smack into the arena rails. And the other one, he for every good day I had a good ride with him, he would have 10 days of terrible riding with him where he would spook at every little thing or blow up in the middle of the arena. And you can't have a horse blowing up in the arena because no. it's dangerous. It's totally dangerous for that to happen. And uh, so when I, finally, when I finally did get a good horse, I realized that, um, yeah, I should have had a mentor helping me find the right horse because when I got shotgun. He was different in day and night. He, uh, when he wasn't in the arena, he was quiet and loving, and you could go anywhere. And he never spooked at anything, and and anyone a newbie could ride him. And that was how he always was. Um, but when it came to the arena, as soon as you got in the shoot with him. He's like, let's get it done. We're not going to. And he wouldn't. He let you know if you were messing around too long, holding him back. And uh, my, he he helped me get over a lot of my fear I had, because I what I was, I was afraid of letting a horse go out. You know, just run, and me falling off coming around that barrel. And um. He was so good about it. I have some really great pictures of us racing together. And hmm. um, I was I was in first place when I made my move to Greenland. If I had finished out the season, I would have won a saddle. Oh, wow. That would have been cool. Yeah, definitely. But I don't have regrets or anything about not doing it. I mean, I would for two years in a row I was in second place. And I was fine with that. I mean, I wasn't I was just happy. I was just happy to to even, you know, be able to win, be that close to the top with everybody, especially with riders who've been riding a long time. 
Right. And been racing a long time. I, I miss it. I didn't realize how much how much time the horses took in my time until I moved here. Yeah, horses are a lot of work too. Yep, and I had four of them. Do they have horses in Greenland? Yeah, there's some Icelandic horses over on the um, sheep farmers' farms. I just haven't gone over there to see about riding one. And I visit when I was in um, Sissy Mint last. I there was, and they're still there. There's like five five of them, I think. And I've gone to give them carrots and and uh, sugar cubes when I've been there. I'll go visit because I you know I miss the smell of a horse. And every time when you stand there and you you have you know, loved horses all of your life and you get that smell in your nose, you're just like in heaven. Yeah. There's just there's just something about the power of a horse. And being with them is just so cool. Yeah, my uh, my neighbors have like eight or nine horses. Cool. And um we give them apples or carrots and that kind of thing, you know. I've never rid them. But... You never had a desire to at least try one? Not my neighbor's horses, no. Are I they grew wild? Up, I grew up riding horses. I know how to ride and all that, but um, they don't they don't ride their horses very often, so <laughs> interesting. Yeah. What's it look like? I don't know. Maybe they have no time, or maybe the horses there, maybe, well, sometimes people um, have horses just because they just enjoy having them and they don't, um, they're, they're not interested in riding them, so to speak. Yeah, there's only like three or four of them that I've ever seen them ride. But um, I think they just enjoy having the horses, you know. I mean, they they take good care of them. So that's probably what it is. Um, one of the things I did with my um, barrel horse uh, shotgun because he was up in age. Um, right before I moved, he was Nora. What are you chewing on? Oh, somebody's been in my... Oh, you've been in my basket, haven't you? No. Um, what was I going to say? I found... I, I wanted to retire him. I didn't want him raced um, after, you know, I left. So I found a home where he was just used for trail riding and stuff. And they ended up, I think she might have rode him for about a year. Learning. Nora! Um, she rode him for about a year to learn how to ride. And then they bought another horse. And they pretty much put him on pasture and let him be a horse. He wasn't used for riding anymore. And, and last summer, he passed away. At 30, um, he was either 31 or 32. So, you know, he had a good life. And he yeah. was such a good horse. He'd been racing since he was three. He definitely didn't like teenagers. That wanted to run, and the only reason he didn't like them very much is because, you know, teenagers don't always warm up their horses, and horses need to be warmed up for racing. You can't just go throw them out in the middle of the arena and expect them to, to um, 
give you all they got because right. it makes them sore. That's the purpose of warming them up. If you're not cold racing them, because the later they suffer from pain. And then you got yourself a handful of the horses in pain. Hello, Misty. Hi, Misty. You're not late. No one's late. You come when you come, and I'm fine with that. Right now, I'm working on the um, block for the label, with the label. You'll see it in just a minute. I probably go through go through more trouble than it's you know most people probably do, but I like making it look nice and make it so that it can't be cut off of here. It take a lot of work to tear this up. You know what I saw that was really cool is uh uh what's the lady's name of Jordan Fabrics. Donna. Yeah, Donna. Donna had a quilt that she had made and it and I guess later on down the road she noticed that there was a triangle that was sewn in the wrong direction. And she <laughs> did a video on how to remove a piece of a quilt that's been already quilted, how to take part of the quilting out, how to take the block that is in the wrong direction out. Then turn around and sew it back in in the right direction and then quilt that portion back again. It was the coolest thing I ever seen. I can't oh. stay awake. I'm going to leave you running, but have fun. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye, Brenda. Thank you for coming, Brenda. I thought that was neat how she did it and she made it look so easy. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to go back and watch that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So that means you could probably fix ripped blocks in, in the same manner that she did, you know, turning that one around that was wrong. Mm -hmm. I would have just left it. Yeah, me too. It was, you know, once it's pulled it, I'm like, mm, let's not. Yeah. But I think she just wanted to teach a skill that is there. Potential yeah. skill that you can do it if you really want it to, right? I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Now I need to trim this down to a five inch block. And then I'll show it to you guys. I'm 
of him. So I know this is five inches this way. Sorry, I'm concentrating here for a minute. Trying to make sure I get this done properly so I don't mess it up. It's starting to get dark, so it's cooling off again. Cold. Will it drop? Cold. Will it get really cold up there once that happens? Yeah, it's going to get below zero again tonight. I know. I mean, up where you're in your room. Yeah, unless I go get another heater. Old man winter definitely wants to make everybody a little bit miserable, huh? Yep. Okay. I'm going to show you my little block. Okay. Oh, oops. Nice. So this is my little uh label block. Yep. Cool. Oh, maybe I, I can like get it closer it. to the camera. So this is how I do it. Mm -hmm. Joy I just have to pass a CT scan next week to celebrate. I missed something. Oh, cancer-free for five years. Cool. I'll be right back in a few. My computer is acting up. Hopefully rebooting will fix the problem. See you when you get back. All right. Now let's get this put. On the bottom. Let me make sure I looked at that properly. Where's that picture at? I think I should, oh, never mind, let's see what I did. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this uh, label on it. Thank you, Denise. I didn't know if y'all saw the step, how I did it or not. I, I don't know how much that camera's showing you. But this is what the back of it looks like. Looks good. Thank you. We might get this all put together, but well, we won't. I don't know. What time is it now? How long have I been on? Oh, I still got 30 minutes before it becomes 11. Um, maybe started, I'll be able to get this. Hmm? It says you started streaming three hours ago. <laughs> yeah. I've been going on Saturdays. I've been going like three and a half to four hours, and then I stopped. On Thursdays, I only do three. Because not everybody's going to stay up that late on a weeknight. Oh, 
will. So, um, yeah, and I think I'll be able to get at least this, this main border on, and then all I'll have to do is put the blue border, the outer border on it next. I think I'm going to use a leader because this thing's acting weird. Maybe I need to clean it. But I cleaned it before I started this, so I don't know why it's acting like this. Hmm. I've threaded it twice, and it seems okay now. I must Robin have done something. Robin wants to know if you're making picture windows. Is that what that's called? Could be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Becca will be live in half an hour, so I will leave then. Okay. Yeah, I knew she was going live soon, so I was going to try to get this done before she started so that I can mosey on over there. Oh, that's right. And I, I know forgot. I'll lose I'll lose most everybody when that when she starts. I forgot she was going to be on. Yeah, she's not you're normally on a Saturday. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Her and uh Donna. Yeah. Getting back to work on that. I don't know what it's called, but I forget what it was called, too. Soology or something. Oh, yeah, that could be. All right. Got this strip done for the side. So now all I got to do is get the other two at, let's see here. Make sure I did it right. One, two, one, two, three, blah, blah. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're all here. So I'm going to set this one up here for now. And let's get the other two pieces on this other one. And then I can sew the sides on. And then once I get these, I'll probably go ahead, if I don't finish the board, the blue border part tonight, or I mean during the live, I'll probably go ahead and sew that on and then go ahead and um, get the batting cut. I don't... Well, Teresa, what do you think about that? Should I show them how to cut the batting, or do you think that really matters? Well, it uh, probably would matter. Because we're to doing a that... start to end. Go ahead. Yeah, I would try to show the batting, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have all this ready for next weekend so we can get the sandwich. And maybe I can at least, you know, get two diagonal lines put on it with the um, painter's tape. So that I can you know, sew those first two lines. Because I'm going to uh, do diagonal quilting, straight line quilting with this. Because I think it'll look good on this particular quilt top. At least I think it will. I don't know how to free motion, so I don't want to even try. Not right now, anyway. Okay, we got that on the top. Because that's on the bottom. Yep. I want to make sure this dark purple was up on the top. Now, let's get two blocks put on the bottom. Let me see what I can choose from here. Maybe that one. Or maybe a blue one. I haven't used one. And purple. Okay. Let's get these on here. And then we'll be ready to sew both both sides on. 
I think it was a label for her quilt. Okay. Wait. I missed something. Robin, um, the little block that you saw was my quilt label. It's part of this uh, border that I'm putting as part of the backing for the backing of my the little quilt we've been I've been sewing for you guys. Well, I'm starting to get pretty cold up here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and head out, Katie. Okay, thank you for hanging out. Yeah, I had fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you can yeah, come yeah. anytime. Yeah. Well, I have some more. Oops. I have some more spots that needs someone to sew with me. Okay. Let me I know. can send you some dates. Yeah, I'll okay. send you some dates and see if there's any of them that you think you might have time for. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Teresa, for coming. I really appreciate it. Sure, anytime. I'll see you all later. Bye, everyone. Later. Bye. Okay, so now I've got this done. I'm going to press both of the side strips, and then uh, we'll get them sewed onto the quilt. I mean, the backing, sorry. So let me get it pressed. Diane, are you still here? Because you're about to see part of your mathematics coming to fruition here. All right, let's get this. Other one pressed? No, Nora. Leave it alone. Okay. So this has been pressed now? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start attaching the sides on. And let's see how that looks when we get done. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half. Since this is the long part now that I'm doing. So I can find my center. And then I'm going to find the center of this long piece so that I can make sure I match the center up before I pin the edges together. 11 o'clock, I think. Um, wait a minute. Let me see what time it is now. Yeah, it's 11 my time, so it'll be 10, 9, 8 o'clock, y'all, Eastern Standard Time. Hi, Mona. But I don't want to stop until I get these sides on. So let's do the first one. I'm going to make sure I get it. Wait a minute. Please tell me I didn't do this upside down. I thought I did. <laughs> that would have been bad. Okay. Now that I got distracted, let me retry this again. I was worried I had something upside down because I have two 
to block two of these uh, pieces that I sewed in that are directional. And I wanted to make sure they were going in the right darn direction. And I got to make sure this quilt label is also going in the right direction because it the quilt label goes to the bottom. So I'm going to find the center of it and I'm going to put a crease in it so I know where to pin it at. And then I'm going to pin the, the center to center first so that I know where the middle is and I can't see the crease. That's not good. So sometimes when you crease fabric, because of whatever color it might be, you might not see the crease. And if that happens, what I what I do is I stick a straight pin in it so I know where it's at. And you just have to be careful not poke yourself because you did that. But at least you know about where it's supposed to be. It seems it's hard to see the crease on this turquoise. Leave Jake, leave Jake alone. Who's Jake? Are you talking about Jack? All right. Oh. This is the bottom. This is going to pin this way. Okay. All right, so now I'm about to pin them together. I'm gonna make sure I get it, you know, secured pretty good. Linda. I didn't know if she, I said hi to you earlier or not. Okay. So I put a couple pins right here where I wanted them at. And now what I'm going to do is refold it together so that I can go ahead and, and work my way toward the center from the outside. That way I know that they're laying like they're supposed to be. And there's also right here, um, there's a, a seam that I can nest together, which will align that, that corner block, those two corner blocks together with each other so that they'll lay properly there. And hopefully I won't have to get Jack out to fix something. So I got that one done. And now I'm going to fold it the other direction so that I can get this to line up properly.
Wow, I need mm. something's wrong. Um, let's see, what can we talk about while you're waiting on me to, while I'm fanning this? Hmm, what can we talk about? What can we talk about? So after I come back from QuiltCon and we we start working our way through spring and summer, is there any particular thing that you guys can think of that you might like to see me do? In between all the other little things that I've got planned? Is there something you would like to see me um, make or show you how to do that I possibly might know how to do? Or would you all like me to set up some kind of summer summer, uh, uh, a summer so along? where we all sew so many little blocks or something and all of us participate. Are you interested in that? I know there's so many content creators out there that y'all are a part of, and I know several have uh, projects already in the works. So I wasn't sure whether any of you would have time to really, you know, possibly do something, some project with me or not. A Bargello. Do you know I've never done a Bargello? I have never done a bar gel, ever. Show me how to do those triangles with that roll. Okay, yeah, I can do that. No problem, Joy. What size do you have, or have you already bought them? Or have you bought them, I mean? Do you know what size you want to buy? If I did a Bargello, I would want my Bargello to be totally different. So when are you starting your legit kit? Oh, that subject came up. Okay. So the legit kit's been ordered by Becca. And she's going to hand it over to me at QuiltCon. And then when I get back home, um, I will have to sit down and look at all of it. And, uh, yeah, probably... Start on it sometime this summer. Um, the other thing I was going to mention about that is when I get the um, color legend, you know, that shows the colors of what's in that quilt, I'm probably going to be a little naughty and um, look for boutiques to change some of the colors in it. While I'm in the States, where I'm not using all of the Kona colors, but get something close that matches it and change some of the colors in it, probably. So um, I will let you know when I'm going to start it when I get back from QuiltCon. I know I need to pick up some extra things like a note, big, thick. Uh, I know I need a three ring notebook to put all that stuff in. And um, I'm going to see if I can't find myself a folding file 
system because I don't I can't buy a file cabinet here to keep things in. So I gotta figure out a plan of attack. So I'm going to improvise. Have a good night, Mona. Thank you for coming. Joy, there's all kinds of sizes. If you go to Fat Quarter Shop uh, website and in the search uh, bar, type in half square triangle paper, and it, it and click on the the main link it gives you for that, and go have a look at all the different sizes. There is so many different sizes. You want to see mine? Check this out. I know. I'm getting distracted, aren't I? This is my stash of half square triangle paper. You can get all the way down to one inch half square triangle paper. I think I might have saw they might be even half inch, but that's tiny. Yeah, there's all kinds of sizes. Uh, the largest size I think is for a seven inch half square triangle. The smallest I have is one inch, I think. But now I do, I also have, um, I guess what you call charm pack size ones. Um, she used them. I don't remember what she used them for, but a lot of them I had came inside of uh, so sampler boxes. Those, but those are in my sewing room. I would have to go look for those because I keep those in a separate box because they're not in rolls. They're in um, packets. Jack has been a divorce let lawyer too. Really? Why? Somebody got a divorce over Jack the Ripper? I didn't know there was. <laughs> I like them a lot because you can take you if you if you're going to use like say you're going to use one background and you know that you're going to use certain amount of colors. Let, let me give you an example. Say you're going to make a red, white, and blue quilt, and um, and you know how many. How many red and uh, red red with background you're going to need, and how many blue with background you're going to need of triangles? Then you can take and cut fabric and lay it out so that you can do a big, huge, long piece of paper with however many triangles you intend on making. Because for every um, square, there's two half squares. 
Pringles comes out of it. Man, there's so much. Yeah, it's a little loose. The um, not the border, but the um, the inside where I'm uh, pinning it to the solid fabric part. There seems to be a uh, extra space, so I'm trying to wiggle it around so that when the feed dogs grab it, hopefully it'll just. I hope it doesn't. I hope I don't end up with a wave. Well, I can definitely do a um, a sew where you can see how it works. And I, we can start from cutting the fabric and everything. It's not fitting snug. It's It's got extra... Um, let me show you. So it could be I didn't cut the yardage right. See there? Can you see that? I I I'm wondering if I shouldn't stop and um take one end off and trim a little bit off of it. What do you think, Diane? Before I go sewing it on. Because I don't want it to be I don't want it to end up with this weird um trim from the center out. And trim the border as needed. So don't so don't worry about lining up these two seams right here. I see what you're saying. Okay, God. So don't bother to. So you're saying not for me not to worry about aligning those two scenes, right? do that see you later andrea becca's on okay um so to be continued then because i'll go ahead and um stop the live so y'all can go see becca thank you everyone for coming uh diane i want to talk to you over on facebook um thank you all for coming and staying with me for the four hours i appreciate it see you over on becca's and have a great night okay bye I don't know, Robin. They don't have to match. I mean, there's no rule that says it does. Right. But if you want to get that to line up, you might have to remove one sh short border and trim your... Yeah, I was just thinking, take that one side, one, one border off and trim it and then fix it. Thank you, Joy, and I love you too. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, see you over on Becca's. And stay tuned for next Saturday. I'll have this ready for us to make a sandwich out of it. Okay? See y'all later. Dan, I'll message you over on Facebook. See you later, alligator. Look at my browser. There it is.